Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. We're gonna do some DIY Dollar Tree Harry Potter signs. This was from my birthday party last year. We're just gonna use whatever signs you want just to get some inspiration from the internet. And we're gonna start with this eyeball sign. Um, I know it looks crazy, but if you are not familiar with the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, then you're probably not gonna to wanna to watch this video unless you want some different sign ideas because then you could just stick around. For this one, we're only gonna do a little bit of judging to it i ended up not setting up a potion station just because i was running out of spaces to display everything but i will show you how i just transformed this very quickly um, with a little bit of paint what i did was i just sanded off the glitter and i went through this middle section with just plain black paint once you sand off the glitter you want to make sure that it's a nice smooth surface and then i give it a wipe down with just bathroom wipes these are like flushable or baby wipes whatever you have on hand just let it dry before you paint it so you don't actually like make a white wash okay and there's uh, another touch I'm going to do to it is I'm also going to paint the lid now um, Harry Potter's potions master may have a jar full of different colored eyeballs but I'm sure he doesn't have a purple lid on his jar of different colored eyeballs so I wanted to go ahead and change that as well so we've used this sign lots in our channel we just ripped the paper right off and we're going to work on this sort of like regular uh, wrapper paper well not wrapper paper mm -hmm, sure craft paper sort of color um what i was thinking was was actually paper brown paper bag but i don't know it just got lost on me um but for this we're just going to take the black and we're going to go inside the white polka dots we're going to leave the white polka dots and we're going to leave the white line just to leave that nice trim this is just waverly's chalk paint oh actually it's not it's uh american accents which is from cracker Bar uh, cracker barrel Oh, maybe I shouldn't do this right now. <laughs> this is this is a black chalk, chalk paint from American Accents, which is by Apple Barrel, I believe, or Plaid. I can't remember exactly which, but it was gifted to me. And I was like, we're going to go ahead and use it. Um, turns out that I wasn't able to save the polka dots all around. So I went ahead and I just left the white line around. And then I put a quick coat along the top. Like I said, Potions Master may have a different color eyeballs in his jar, but I'm sure he doesn't have a vibrant lid and uh, very playful uh, colors on the, on the bottles themselves. So I just thought, yeah, let's go ahead. So I just took some of the, this is just like um, Waverly Gray, Elephant Gray. Took a tiny bit on my brush just to create sort of a, a just a loose top like doesn't have to be anything fancy just sort of give it in the directions of of how a jar lid would go um, these are supposed to be kind of old everything at Hogwarts is kind of old so I wasn't trying to make it look perfect I wasn't trying to give it, give it ribs ribs like the jar lid ribs or whatever I just wanted to make it look I don't know basically just not purple <laughs> and once the center is dried and you can see it's drying rather quickly I'm just going to write a uh, potions class that's all it was just uh I wanted to make a sign for all the different classes that we were going all the different stations really we were going to have um the only one we ended up not having like I said was um this potions class but I thought I would share the sign with you anyway um oh do I run out of room for potions or did I just write potion potion this way <laughs> potion classes <laughs> oh it is what it is uh, this is just a chiseled brush and I'm kind of using it like a um kind of like a calligraphy marker almost I just have Waverly white chalk paint and I'm just going to go ahead and write potion class I guess it's potion class works too let me take that back and then with a little arrow of where I was going to hang this originally next to where the signs were so that's that one and I didn't show what you displayed because again I didn't display it for this next one we're just going to take one of these round but you can do whatever <laughs> um, shape signs this one came um, last spring I believe um, I love that it was round it has one hole in it and we're going to leave that hole don't fill it because we're going to hang this sign and I wanted to make Ollivander's wand uh, shop. Now, if you look at the movies, as opposed to when you go to the theme parks, um, the signs are all different. So you really can just use your, what you have is really what I wanted to do. I think that the theme park actually has the round O olive under sign that I got the inspiration from. I believe it's from one of the theme parks. But I just tried to match the color the best I could. It was sort of this like 
muted old sort of turquoisey aqua green um this is actually just straight from the bottle this uh I want to tell you the name of it, but I don't remember the name of it. It was a, it was gifted to me with a bunch of uh, chalk paint that I got a couple of years ago from Plaid from um, a beautiful subscriber. And um, it is just like this really pretty color. I just wish I knew the name of it offhand. Now this sign doesn't have any glitter, but it does have foiling on it, but you really can't tell. And we're just going to paint over the foiling and the chalk paint's just going to make it all disappear. Um, you want to paint one side, let it dry completely, turn it over and paint the other side. What I love especially about using chalk paint is that it, you don't really always need a couple of coats. Usually you just need one, especially when it's a color. It's a lot different when it's white, but when it's a color, usually you usually can get away with just one coat. So then all I did was I took to the internet. I looked on my iPad or my phone. I printed out a picture of what the Ollivander sign looked like. Yeah, like I said, it was this green and it was kind of muted and faded and weathered. Um, I kind of like, you saw me dry brush black on there a second, but I thought it would be better to actually put the name on first and then weather the entire thing um so we're going to kind of do both we're going to do one on one side we're going to like weather it and then we're going to write the name and then we're going to weather it some more um just because it's supposed to be a couple of hundred years old this sign or older maybe a thousand years old i feel like it's i feel like i don't remember now so if you're a real true potter head and you know this off the top of your head like my best friend sharon she totally is going to tell me exactly what you're all you know olive anders was founded so <laughs> um actually it's going to be on the sign in a minute <laughs> but um we're just going to go ahead and weather it this is just way that black chalk paint we used uh on the eyeball sign we just took that dry brush i like to wrap them in wipes while i'm working just to keep like the paint fresh um and then i'm just taking that it's sort of like very minimal paint on it i'm going to take a wipe and i'm just going to go over it and just basically play with it until it feels to you like you want it to look. I know that, that sounds silly. This would also be good instead of using black, you could actually use like antiquing wax, which would give it more of a, uh, like a brown tone, like a wood sign. But um, I went with what I had. I had this paint already on this brush, so I just went with it. Now, as far as the free handing is concerned, yes, I was scared myself. I will tell you the truth. I've been doing art for a very long time and sometimes you just gotta go for it. But in all fairness, you can print this and do transfer. Um, if you have a Cricut, you can print this with a Cricut. Um, cut out your decal, whatever you feel like you want to do. I'm just going to show you how I'm freehanding it. And I will tell you that I did mess up. That wand is way too long because it's going to interfere with where I'm going to write. And I'm going to end up shortening it and fixing it. But like I said, I just went ahead and I took the inspiration piece and I just went ahead and copy the O that's the wand and the whole thing. Now, um, the font is just one that I'm comfortable with. This isn't the exact font uh, that I'm writing makers of fine wands. That's not the actual font from like whatever signs, like I, like I mentioned before, there are different signs at different sources have different signs. Do a font that you're comfortable with or that's easily transferable, or if you have stickers already, you know, do something that you are comfortable with. If, um, doesn't make a difference if it's actually true, true to, uh, a hundred percent true to the source material. So I think that the most important part about this being true to the source material is having that O with the wand and the stars, because literally that's what is a consistent theme in all of the Ollivander signs all on the box when you buy a wand on the signs at the theme park at the signs in the movie all of them have that swirly O with the stars and the wand okay so that's the part that I really want to make sure you got right everything else is like I said it's it's different representations different uh different companies do different representations for different uh processes and stuff for different applications that was the word so now that I've shortened the wand by <laughs> adding some paint <laughs> to cover up the wand, um, I'm going to go ahead and finish writing. Um, the good thing is this is two sided and you mess up the first side, you know, you're not going to mess up the second one, right? Yeah. Good luck with that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I really didn't mess up the second one too bad. <laughs> but um, so this O has sort of like a thicker line and it's layered. This white paint 
um, pen is from the Dollar Tree. It's sort of like that glass marker. Um, I use that as a basis for like all of my white writing. Some of it I went over with paint if I wanted it to be super bright, but some of it I just left, it was fine. Um, like I said, this is sort of supposed to be um, the part that stands out the most is the, the O with the wand. Now I did just freehand that wand, but here's what the great part about wands are. They all have a unique, uh, handles to them designs to them they're all supposed to be made from actual wood so you know just like a tree branch has bumps and bends and twists and turns they're all very unique so I went ahead and I just wiggled my brush at the end there just to get a sort of bumpy type handle nothing special it was just my unique addition to it okay now I went over the writing just to give it a little bit of brightness. Like I said, that first coat is really good, but the second coat really does make it pop a little bit better. And then we're just gonna repeat the same on the second side. But again, we're gonna repeat it, but we're not gonna make any mistakes, right? Sure. <laughs> I mean, come on. But you see how I'm, I'm looking back and forth really for the reason of, I wanna make sure that with the hole on the top that I actually have it even. So, um, I'm hanging this sign from a plant hanger. The plant hanger that I hung this sign from was not from the Dollar Tree just because I only had two and I used them in other parts of the house. This plant hanger I had in my mud room used to hold all my baskets. So, um, but you could hang it from a dollar store, the Dollar Tree's plant hanger as well. Um, this is just the only one that is not hung by that as far as the, the signs today are concerned. Okay, so I'm just repeating it. Um, you can take this opportunity to um, make the first one like your practice side because where I have it hanging, it is two-sided, but you have to be like twisting your neck to see the one side. But depending on where you're doing it, you may not even need two sides. If you're just going to hang it flat, flat on a wall, you won't need two sides at all. But I'm, ha I'm having it hanging just like it's a real store sign. Um, we hung it outside the dining room um, because part of... <laughs> Part of what was happening in the dining room, a lot of stuff was happening in the dining room, was uh, Ollivander's wand, sh wand shop was in there as well, okay? So now I'm just repeating the same thing and I decided to leave the wand for the end because I did love how that wand came out and I'm just going to see, simply repeat the process and it's not exact match and unless somebody's going to sit there and flip your sign back and forth and notice whether or not you have an exact match, nobody's going to really notice, okay? So now that it's all completely dried, I'm going to, again, I'm thinking like I have to age this um, paint and writing because it's no way that the wood looks aged and not the writing. That just doesn't even make sense. So I wanted to make sure that it popped and now I'm just going to go back in and brush very, very dry brush over the white because I still want that to pop. And you can see what I'm talking about, how it's hanging on this sign. I just hung one of the Dollar Tree's chains from it. I hooked it basically to itself and I hung it there and I absolutely love it. Now this sign was at the Dollar Tree. It was sort of in like the picture frame section where the little artwork was in my store. Um, but they had this came out with all this wedding stuff at one point and they had one that said gifts, one that said reception, like directionals. And I feel like they didn't make sense for those things because they were all pointing in the same direction. <laughs> so it's like your signs always had to be on the left and all of the items had to be on the right. It was just bizarre. But anyway, we're just going to take it and I'm going to paint it a really, really light green, very, very pale mint green. You're going to want to paint white over it first so that you can cover up all those letters. And then I just took some of that same green that we used for the Ollivander sign that was on that board and just went ahead and dry brushed it really, really quickly. Again, we're going to set that off to the side to dry, excuse me, because words aren't coming out. <laughs> the words. Um, and then we're going to create another sign using the bottom of a Christmas tag. Christmas tags that came out a couple of years ago, we ended up cutting them down for different projects. And we had the bottom piece that was like double layer and it said like Noel or... I feel like the other one said believe possibly. But anyway, we cut those off and I saved them because they were nice thick pieces of chipboard with pieces of chipboard attached to them so they're two layers thick. I went ahead and I sanded it even and I painted it a nice brown because I'm going to go ahead and make signs for different classes. This is going to be, uh, the green one will be herbology and the brown one will be for the library. Um, I was gifted some lovely um, gifts from Sarah Jane 
over from Chic on the Cheap for my birthday. She gave me this beautiful backdrop of a library. I was also gifted. Um, Susie and her daughter uh, gave me a beautiful little like um, diorama of a little Harry Potter scene and I had it all set up in the library. My sister Jane was amazing. I want to thank her constantly for help with my party. She set up all the stations as I was making the sign. She just was busting out and creating all these stations. I owe all of my creativity, my sister Jane, I swear. She she did it first. Whatever I did, she did it first. Um, so now that they've set them off to dry, uh, like I said, one's just plain brown and one's green. We're going to take that green paint straight on, not diluted, and we're just going to write the word Hobiology. Again, use whatever font you are happy with, that you are comfortable with. You can also use the transfer method. You can also do different things that we're going to show later on in the video. I have different techniques to make different signs. So this is just, again, I'm using that chisel brush to almost use like a calligraphy marker and it just going for it because it's a sign for me. If I was selling this, it would probably be try to be more perfect. If I was making it as a gift, I might even try to be even more perfect, but I'm not. It was just for me to keep in my house um, and to share with my family. So what I did was I went ahead and I added just some leaves on there just to make it feel like herbology and maybe a little bit of... Uh, um, I was thinking like vines, but then I was like, yeah, just leave the leaves. But then we're going to go back with a marker in a little bit and add some dimension to it. Now for the library, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to use white or ivory, depending on what you want to use, but you want to use a light color. And I'm going to do the same thing just to pick a, a font you're comfortable with. Um, we have done different lettering tutorials on my channel. All of my DIYs are on my um, DIY playlist, but uh, if you list it from oldest to newest, you'd, be, you'd find it faster if you went from oldest to newest because it was a really long time ago. But I showed you guys how to do um, test out fonts, practice fonts, and as well as transfer fonts. We've got all that's like different kinds of videos on our channel. So I'm just painting a little book and a little stack of books, and now it's the library. <laughs> now, um, I'm going to just take a, a black Sharpie, basically for both of them, I think. And I'm just going to give it sort of an outline. Now, if you have uh, handwriting that you're not happy with or painting skills that you're not happy with, you can outline your letters and then make all of those imperfections disappear. In fact, it makes it look almost like a more high end. But what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of creating a shadow. I'm doing sort of like uh, drawing everything on the the right side and the top. So um, just to give some more dimension to it and to clean up the mess that I made. <laughs> and then I'm going to go ahead and antique it as well because, again, they're supposed to be old. Now with Herbology, I'm going to kind of do the same thing. I'm going to kind of give it a little dimension outline. What's good about using the white and or, and or the black is that you actually make could make the sign look like it's etched in as opposed to just painted on. Um, but with the white, I've decided to just do veining on the leaves. And uh, then I'm going to touch up with a little black and maybe I was, yeah, I was back and forth about like, do I put vines on there? Um, but then I found this green glitter pen that I got at the Dollar Tree. Thought it was so cool. You can't really see it on the camera. It shows up better in real life. But I just went ahead and I added very light green vines to everything. And I don't mean light green. They're not heavy strokes of paint. <laughs> it's regular green. It's just not heavy strokes of paint. And then I went ahead and I antiqued it as well. With the books. And I didn't make this all nice and neat. The library. Backdrop, which was a gift. The library. And we have right here. We have the diorama. Which was adorable, which was a gift little tiny little bottles and the books and the chair and the newspaper and then we go over here to herbology and that is the internet connection that Jerry always has in her guest room but I won't show you the code because that's not right Mandrake in Herbology, how cute. The little plants. Thank you, Jane.
Jane had a few cocktails before she did this video, so I'm sorry it was a little shaky, but she did a really nice job. Now for this owl resign, I got this owl as a gift as well. It came in a kit of um, like things that you hold up while you're taking pictures, like Photoshop props. Do you guys know what they are? And there was this beautiful like headwig owl. And I was like, I have got to use that in a DIY because all of almost all the owls I have in my owlery are white owls or snowy owls, which I thought was kind of cool. But I just took this sign from the Dollar Tree. You guys have seen it. It's from Christmas. It's a thousand years old. Um, I painted the backside. I loved finding unique shape signs because they do make like great DIYs. That's the way thing I like. Sometimes I, oh, this sign's pretty, but look at the shape of it, you know? So that's what this one was. Now this one ends up hanging on my fireplace. It was just uh, flat, so I only have to paint one side. Um, but I like to paint the edges because that's really kind of important to me. I know that sounds weird. And for this sign, we're going to use Dollar Tree stickers. I'm going to show you how to use Dollar Tree stickers to, um, and how to line them up perfectly or as perfectly as possible. And we're also going to do a little bit of handwriting, but I'm going to show you how also to keep that neat as well. So the next thing I'm doing is I'm just taking that same black paint brush that I've had all day and I'm just going to stroke it up and down back and forth just to look like some weathered old wood. Um, the Owlry as far well, like in all my research, I couldn't find the name of an Owlry like it's not I couldn't find like Jones's Owlry. I just found the Owlry. So I went ahead and I knew that I wanted to put, um, I knew that I wanted to put the owl on there. It's not glued down yet, but I'm just trying to figure out the spacing of the letters. Um, and I didn't have enough E's, so I couldn't write the word the in stickers. Oh, well, <laughs> this is why we always buy extra. You guys yell at me for having too much stuff, but this is why I always buy extra. So I'm just going to hand write the, the word the, and then we'll put owlry down. Okay. So what I do like to do, and I don't know if other DIYers have taught this to you. I do like to cut the letters out and place them, uh, visually line them up before I unpeel them. But then as I peel them, if you don't press them down hard, then you can move them. They are repositionable until you really rub them on. Um, so that's what we're going to do. I've taken the L, this is a uh, square, I'm sorry, it's a ruler, it's a square ruler that's from the hardware section of the Dollar Tree, um, and I'm using it, I've lined the one leg up to the side of the sign, so I'm perfectly perpendicular with the side of the sign, and I'm just lining the letters across the top, using the ruler, the, the ruler as uh, measuring the spaces between each letter, so it's even. I think I ended up having to be... Um, an eighth of an inch between each letter for it to fit but you see how I'm like kind of dry fitting them that's what we're doing first to make sure that they do all fit okay and we got to get a Y down there and then figure out if it's going to fit all right now when we're ready to place them we're going to go ahead and place them all properly now I will tell you that if you're going to do something like this with a picture on one side you don't have to worry about the letters being even between the board left to right. You don't have to worry about lining up the middle of the word with the middle of the board because you can always relocate your picture um, to basically make it even according to the words, if that makes any sense. Okay. So you can see that technique worked out really well. You're just going to go ahead once you're done and you're going to press all your letters down. Um, and then, <laughs> and then, and then, we're going to go ahead and take a Sharpie and we're going to write the word the on there. So I just glued the um, owl underneath the sign because we needed the entire space to fit those letters. Um, but if you, like I said, if you're going to have a picture, you can do whatever you want. You can leave that out. You can, if you want to just make your family's name or whatever, just to give you an idea of how to line it up is really what that point was. And now from upside down, I find it a lot easier. It was one of the techniques I was taught in high school about drawing. When you draw or write upside down, you actually copy the line the way you see it, not the way you think it's supposed to be, if that makes any sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, throw back to Elaine Kane. Whoop, whoop. Okay. Anyhow. <laughs> now, I don't know what you guys see, but to me, it totally looks crooked. But I know it's not because I use the ruler, but I think it's the way the camera is. 
Um, I decided to go ahead and add the word emporium just to fill in some of the blank space down below. I was kind of trying to figure out what to do. You can also put like a pretend opening date or established in such and such. Um, but uh, I didn't do that. I just went ahead and I added the word emporium. And then we're going to hang this from some dollar, dollar Tree chains. Now the chains can come on the hanging baskets, but they also do sell three chains separately and I find that that to be a good bargain as well um, because you get um, sort of like more bang for your buck I know that sounds weird but um, it's a it's a nicer chain let's just put it that way okay so we're just going to go ahead and chain it on there and then hook it up <laughs> what I like to do is I like to take that little sort of it has a name. It has a name. I know it has a name. But that's a little like hook that you pinch on the inside. And I like to use those to hang the signs from. And then I'm just going to make one continuous chain. I'll eat a porium and there's some little elves that go with it. There's a pretty flowers. Thank you again, Jane. So now we're going to make a sign for the Shrieking Shack. This is probably the second easiest one. Um, we're going to stain this with the Waverly uh, Antiquing Wax. Um, very, very simple. We're only going to stain one side of it because we're going to make this a sign for the door. Uh, basically, the front door is the sh telling everybody that my house is the Shrieking Shack. <laughs> um, but... Just to give you a couple of really good tips, if you're using this wax as stain, um, I've mentioned it before, I like to use a wet rag because otherwise it can really, it could end up being blotchy if you go straight onto raw wood. So I like to take a little tiny wet wipe or rag and just to really spread that around so I don't have any big blotchy spots. If the blotchy spots are something that are on there that you can't correct then go ahead and just make them look like they're purposeful make them look like they are something spilled on there or a big knot in the wood or something like that um, you can go ahead and add some purpose to it um, so the next thing and that as easy as that was this sign was from Halloween by the way um, in case you have, don't recognize it <laughs> um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a another small sign this one is not real wood it is chipboard it is from the summertime it was one of the tiki bar signs or the summer's beaches this way signs I think it was a tiki bar sign um, and I don't really um, mind like if you want it to be an arrow you could leave the arrow telling people that like the streaking shack is this way but I want to show you that if you want to make it just a sign to display that this is the shaking shack you can go ahead and just go straight on the edge I use just another one of the signs the back side just to make it not pointy anymore cut the arrow part off and then it just becomes a nice wood sign now I'm just going to take that same Waverly chalk paint um, sorry antiquing wax and I'm just going to go left and right imagining it's wood and it's going to make it look like it matches it's going to look even though it's chipboard and cardboard it's going to look like it goes with this sign okay now once it's dry um, we're going to go ahead and um, write the shrieking shack on it I think for this one I just decided to go straight in with paint um, if you are a Harry Potter fan and if you hate your handwriting <laughs> or you hate your handwriting but nobody else does this is the perfect sign because this shrieking shack is supposed to look run down and be run down so if you have like shaky handwriting or sloppy handwriting it would be perfect because it's almost supposed to feel a little spooky or a little like off if that makes any sense um, I of course was not caring I was just going in with whatever I could get my hands to do I, at this point I was trying to get all of these things done um, in a very short period of time so <laughs> if you're coming to me because you're a Harry Potter fan and not because you're a fan of my channel hi my name is Jerry Ann I found out at the very last minute that I was going to have my party amidst the pandemic and I wanted to get all the stuff done in a very short period of time <laughs> So I went ahead and I added uh, the word shack and I did it in script and just because I was bored. I don't know why. Don't ask. There really is no rhyme or reason. Just do what makes your heart happy. Now when they were both dry, I just took those pieces of chain that I actually took off the owlery. I just needed two little sections about, I think I cut them about four or five lengths each. Um, and then I'm just going to glue these on because there is a hole at the top 
of the the sign for us to hang it but there is no holes at the bottom to hang the sign so um the, the words excuse me so we're just going to go ahead and add the little hook to the top so we can again hang it from the door hook um, and then we're going to flip it over we're just going to use hot glue hot glue is totally 100 percent fine with me that's the kind of hook i couldn't remember what those hooks are called Does anybody know leave in the comments down below if you know the name of that hook um but anyway we're just going to um these chains uh, are double i don't know double pieces of wire and each other one uh i don't know how to say it if one is if the top one's laying flat then the next one's standing up and then the next one's laying flat and the next one's standing up so i just wanted to make sure i had that that i had two laying flat uh where i glued it to the house and two hang laying fat where flat where i glued it to the sign okay and then once the glue was all dried I flipped it over done and hung it on my door and that's where it stood so I said this was probably the easiest out of all the tutorials or second easiest because the next one is absolutely the easiest 100% the easiest one ever if you're a fan of Harry Potter you know very well that the um, the place where you can get all of your sweets is called Honey Dukes, and Honey Dukes is the candy shop. They she sells sweets. She does uh, baked like uh, cakes and stuff too. So it's just like the favoriteest thing to do. Um, it was my favoriteest thing to do at the party too. So I tried to set up a whole Honey Dukes um, shop, and because uh, I'm a type two diabetic, and my sister and best friend were doing keto, I had some keto friendly and sugar free. Uh, snacks on one side and all of the regular candy and snacks were on the other side um, and let everybody know that they can help themselves to whatever. Um, this sign was like, how am I going to create a honeyduke sign? This one is like, it, it's a lot of detail because there's pink and pink, pink and green stripes and then there's writing. So what I decided to do is just print a piece of paper off the internet. Okay. Now this sign has a very unique shape. As you can see, it's one of those free hug signs. Um, and then what I did was I sort of decided that I'm going to take the square. Now do you see how the sign has bumps but is basically a square with the corners cut off? So what I decided was to take the square with the car corners cut off and then I was just going to use that and I was gonna cut it out and, and basically Mod Podge it to the middle of the honey duke sign so the honey duke sign will be pink with white stripes um, and then it will also have those white bumps on the tops and the, the top the bottom and the two sides so if you again we talked about work with what you have don't make it difficult for yourself do the best that you can with what you have and that's what we did and i just took it and you can use a glue stick if you want to or you can use mod mod podge mod podge because i love mod podge um, there's a lot of different famous techniques if you use uh, I like to Mod Podge the paper and the board that I'm gluing it to. Um, this way I feel like it gets the least wrinkles. I like to Mod Podge over the top um, after I've squeegeed it. <laughs> Look, I put it on wrong. Shh, don't tell anybody I put it on wrong. I measured it in one place and then I forgot to keep the board straight of how I measured it. So um, Dollar Tree signs, as you can imagine, aren't perfect. They aren't perfectly square. So we wanted to go ahead and fix that. So after I squeegeed it, I just took the same Mod Podge brush, not with too much extra Mod Podge on it, and I just went over the top just to protect it. And this one, like I said, all right, this is the second easiest sign because it's just Mod Podge um, and printing. <laughs> um, and then I stood it on a plate rack um, in behind all of the candy at, at Honey Dukes. Okay, so then... Truly, truly, I find the easiest one. Um, again, if you're a fan of Harry Potter, you know where Harry Potter first goes. Uh, his first real venture into the wizarding world is he goes to the Leaky Cauldron. And the Leaky Cauldron actually has a magical sign that you really can't see unless you're magical. Um, but to me, when I first saw this witch sign on Halloween, I knew that this had to be my leaky cauldron sign. Now, at my house, I have, uh, my kitchen is really rather big. The leaky cauldron is a hotel and restaurant, so I thought that the kitchen representation of my house would be the best place to put the leaky cauldron. So what I did was I hung two Dollar Tree 
uh, planter hangers, one on each side of the entrance of my, basically one coming into my kitchen from the front door and one going out of my kitchen to the back hallway. And I took two of these signs and hung them. And I'm literally just painting them black. I put one layer of Waverly chalk paint and ink on both sides, on both, um, on both different signs, both sides of both signs, because I wanted you to be able to see this coming and going, okay? Now, just like with the other signs, you wanna make sure you get the edges, you wanna make sure that you let the front side dry before you paint the black back side. Um, I thought that what would be the coolest is if they actually sold like a holographic, um, you know, at Halloween at the Dollar Tree, they have those sort of portraits that when you turn your head like this or that way, it makes it look like the person's face changes to a skeleton. That'd be so cool if they actually made a leaky cauldron sign like that, where you could just turn your head and it would disappear and then reappear. But I just thought that these were just perfect enough, um, if you've been around here for a while, you know I had a plant hanger already existing on the the wall going into the back hallway where I have my uh, French country scale um, hanging from. So I just needed to put one by the front door. And I used the Dollar Tree chain, one chain through the hole in her hat. And I just looped it onto the plant hanger and back into the hole in her hat. And that was it. It hung really, it hangs really, really nice and evenly, which is really good. Um, and you just want to make sure you get full coverage and let it dry. Like I said, this was the easiest one because basically it's just painting it. The Mod Podge is pretty easy too because that's just painting in Mod Podge. Um, painting and printing in Mod Podge. So I just looped the chain around and I just lifted it over and hung it on the hook. And I just, I loved it. I loved it. I thought it was the easiest. I thought it was the cutest. And it just made me feel like I was right there at uh, the Leaky Cauldron. <laughs> so now for these, this is just more like a tip, I want to say, because I found these banners for $14.99 at Target. But they were just like you were supposed to hang them on a curtain rod or something. I'm not wasn't 100% sure. So I wanted to show you. I took Dollar Tree skewers and if you've been around for a while you know that they have these super long skewers at Dollar Tree that are perfect for toasting marshmallows. Um, I just took the Dollar Tree skewers and a couple of wooden beads and some jute to create hangers for these. Um, I just fed it through the hole at the top like I like I mentioned you could probably do this with wire if you don't have these dowels but dowels would definitely be easier a branch would be good if you don't have it as well anything that's got slack in it will probably um, make the the banner hang floppy so you really don't want that um, so I just took the um, the dowel I put it through cut it out cut it off with like about an inch on each side then I went ahead and I tied on jute I wanted them to be uh, just very taut so I basically tied one end went straight across almost just touching the um, dowel rod the whole time and then tied a knot on the other end. And then I went back after all of that and I went ahead and I glued um, wooden beads to the end. The wooden beads that I got were from, um, I believe they were from Amazon. I, they might have been in a gift bag that I got one time, but they were definitely big enough for this dowel rod um, to, to basically hold the ends on. And I repeated it with all four, basically the same. Um, the only difference was some of the signs I wanted to hang lower from where their hooks were because I wanted them to all be even. Hufflepuff room. Ravenclaw. The room requirement. We know what the room requirement is, right? That's, let me put on the light. That's the platform nine and three quarters. And everybody's going to have a mystery of magic this way. Okay. Let me just set this off. Then we have Ravenclaw, like I said. Slytherin. So that's it for now, everybody. Hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for your patience. Um, hopefully you've gotten some tips, whether or not you're a Harry Potter fan. Maybe you've got some tips for some signs for maybe an upcoming party or event that you have. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Stay tuned because tomorrow we have a second 
video of the rest of the signs coming. And as always, you guys take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye.